What is up, Monday, Monday, people? My name is Peter Bois. I'm here with Gus Davis. Yeah, we are Monday Club. Thank you guys for listening today on Monday Club. We cheers to Frankenstein, real live Frankenstein. We play a game which is bound to get us drunk. And uh, stories from the road. I drive three hours for nothing. Gus did a lock in. We talk about our favorite books. We're, we, yeah, we can read and we uh, teach you something. Welcome to Monday Club. Cheers to the real Frankenstein! To the real Frankenstein! <laughs> Holy hell, man. When I saw this on time Facebook... time to be alive, dude. Like, I what know. a weird, crazy-ass time to be alive that science can do the stuff that science can do now. I saw this on Facebook, and I was blown away that this is even p- trying to happen. Uh, you guys have, might have seen it on Facebook. Frankenstein. Someone is getting a new body. Or someone is yeah. getting a new head, however you want to yeah. look at <laughs> Whichever it. Whichever way you want to put it that way, yeah. It's a it's a head transplant. They plan to do a full-on head transplant. They're taking a dude's head off of his body and putting it onto a cadaver's body that they've sort of kept alive. All and right, quick, quick correction. Right. It is actually going not onto a cadaver, but somebody who has been brain dead. So they're pronounced, they're like a vegetable, they're, or not, yeah, Nothing go happening up in the brain, but they're they're being kept alive on machines. Okay, yeah, well, that, yeah, but they're but the point is that the dude's out, right? And he's getting his head removed so another person's head can take over its body. That's insane. That we're even yeah, thinking about this, like that it's a real live possibility. I'm sure they've tried this back in the day, where they're thinking <laughs> this would be cool. <laughs> Back How far back in the day are you talking? Cool. Like Mary Shelley times or what? The, yeah, the uh, medieval. Is, what is Mary Shelley? I don't know that. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, man. Uh, We're going to talk about books later, so we <laughs> might as well get into it. Well, yeah, all the all the weird torture contraptions and stuff. I'm sure someone had a bright idea to try someone else's head on. Yeah, yeah, but we live in a time where it's actually they're actually going to attempt it. I don't know if you saw the article. Oh, you have the article right there. There are going to be hundreds of doctors are part of this procedure to make it all happen and, and in, in theory, make it work. I, and I'm pulling for the guy. I hope it, I hope it works out because I want to live in a future where, you know, I can put my body on a guy's body who has a perfect six pack and <laughs> go to the beach. <laughs> you could almost have everlasting life then, right? You could just keep getting new. But, well, your brain might deteriorate. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. I think, I think that's still something they're I, working on. Yeah, but I was it's, it's the to, first step. I was listening. To, yeah, I was listening to another doctor talk about this, and the they've done some of this stuff, and a lot of it's experimental. The doctor that I heard the interview on said it's not going to work <laughs> because they've never <laughs> successfully fused a spinal cord together. So that's where the uh, where the doubt lies in that Dude, procedure. I, you know, here's here's the thing. It, at least they're taking a swing. You know, at, at least they're trying to do this it's it's the first step yeah i i hope it works that would be awesome that would be <laughs> incredible so <laughs> cheers to frankenstein cheers, cheers. To Frankenstein. good luck guy good luck all you doctors out there we're, we're pulling for you here yes. at monday club <laughs> <laughs> did you like that that was awesome ah what are you drinking this week gus so I figured for this episode, I'm going to need basically an entire bottle of something. <laughs> so I got, I got myself, it's Chloe Pinot Grigio. It's a white wine from Italy. <laughs> I almost said Italy. Uh, it's a white wine from Italy, 2015, and it kind of goes down like water, which is what I'm going to need for this whole episode. <laughs> I can already tell. Nice. I am drinking, you ever go to through the beer aisle and just pick out a beer based on its um packaging oh absolutely uh, this is from coney island brewing it is merman imperial pilsner i'll read this this medium body pils- pilsner boasts a unique rye spiciness that well anyways it talks about it but anyways there's poseidon look at this look isn't that a cool oh. label there's like poseidon dude that'd be a great tattoo that would be cool but he's yes. uh, a merman apparently but he's got Would a you take a picture of that and put it on our on the FB? Hell yeah. Picture going right. up. 
And it's yeah, delicious, though. I just cool. had my very first sip. And like you, <laughs> I have come prepared for the drinking game we're going to play today. <laughs> I have a cooler that I brought in because, uh, <laughs> and I've got an extra three beers in here because my my studio is not near the fridge. So <laughs> I am prepared, sir. It's a cooler that he has. It's a, it's a cooler from 1975. It's like a red cooler. <laughs> Does it have the cup holders imprinted at the top? No, it doesn't. Wait, let me see. On the inside? No, on, on the outside. It should have... No, it doesn't. It, oh, okay. it was made well. before they invented cup holders. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and get into this drinking game. All right. All right. Let's do it. I listened to last week's episode, and I was appalled by how many times I said the word like. It was a sentence extender, a pause, something to gather my thoughts. When, you, when you're trying to describe something, you're, you say like and like and like and like. I felt like I said it a million times. And I, so every time I say the word like in today's podcast, Gus is going to make me drink. That's true. That's true. Well, I listened to all of our podcasts recently, and my trigger word is, you know, I say that all the time. And it's, this, it's, it's the same thing as saying like, it's my pause word. So every time I say, you know, I'm going to take a drink. Yeah. So this will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> if you're playing along, you can do. You can pick your team. You can pick <laughs> <laughs> Team Pete. Who's gonna, who's gonna Who's gonna be your champion, Pete or Gus, on this episode? Uh, so, if you really want to drink a lot, be on Team Pete, because <laughs> I feel I am pausing and taking my time with my sentences today. <laughs> well, that's still before his first beer is gone. So we'll see how this shakes out. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or whatever your favorite podcast app is and give us a little rating. We always like a little, uh, little love out there and, uh, you can also talk to us. We have an email, huh, Gus? We do. We have a great email. What is it, Pete? Gus, I'm glad you asked. It's uh, Monday Club Podcast at gmail.com. Also, we, we don't have many Twitter followers. We should totally get more Twitter followers. You know what it sucks? Yeah. Yeah, we should. You know what sucks about Facebook is when you have the fan page that they make you boost and pay for posts for your post to get out there to people. Mm -hmm. So they, the first couple posts we did, it went to a ton of people. And now it's only going to a few people organically because they want us to give them money. What the hell, Facebook? Yeah. You know, God, oh, no, oh, drink. <laughs> <laughs> Except I'm gonna put a I'm gonna throw a challenge flag on that because that's an actual you know <laughs> I was gonna say and I'm not gonna drink for this one you know that's why the kids are heading to all of the other social medias because Facebook one all of the parents are on there and two yeah it with all the boosting and paying and monopoliz monopolization that Facebook has to do to keep their revenue up. Snapchat makes it super, super easy. So, yeah, take that, Facebook. Give us our stuff for free. So you're saying we should be on Snapchat too? Dude, we should definitely be on Snapchat. That's where it's at. All right. As of today, we're going to have a Snapchat chat account. Oh, oh, my God. So exciting. <laughs> so exciting. Have you? Do you um, use Snapchat ever? Uh, I do have an account, but I haven't used it much. A couple times. So, I just find it hard. Everything, like, disappears. Quickly, you know. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, ah, this I can is gonna that. date me a. <laughs> this is gonna date me a little bit with the whole. Uh, oh well, I just I just started to understand Snapchat, but I did. I finally got my brain around Snapchat, and the idea behind Snapchat is basically that you have your own TV channel. It's a TV channel that you can do and show off whatever it is that you want to do. And then within 24 hours, it's all gone. And if you sucked at life that day, you can start it all over again. And it's, it's fun. It's fun to set up those snaps where just for, you know, 10 seconds, you get to, <laughs> you get to put on a show for whoever else wants to see it. There's a drink. <laughs> uh, yeah, we should be on uh, Twitter too more. We should we should we should post a Twitter. Are people on Twitter anymore? It seems like it's dying. 
it does seem like it's dying, but I still think it's a good idea. All right, we're we're gonna if nothing else because I like seeing you post. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, so speaking of science, uh, what I, what we cheers to? I was driving Bryce to school today, and up on a billboard, I saw a sign that said, "There is the first HIV preventative pill." Have you seen this? No, but I have been curious about HIV because uh, Magic Johnson is still alive. <laughs> He's the first one, I think, in history to no longer have it. I, I'm making all of this up. If you're a doctor out there, please, please don't send me emails. But I really and truly think I heard that somewhere that he doesn't have HIV anymore. It's yeah. one of those diseases where if you have money, you can take care of that problem there. Well, it seems like it might be like tech, like that'll trickle down to the rest of us, right? One day. Right. I believe that was two <laughs> drinks for you, by the Did way. Did I say like? I see. Yeah. I didn't even know. Oh my God. <laughs> I got you, buddy. Anyways. Yeah. If, uh, if you know anything else about this new HIV preventative pill, please let us know. I'm going to do some research on my own. I, it's. Like I said, what a, what a crazy time to be alive in this world where human heads are getting transferred to other bodies and there's a HIV preventative pill. What, what's next? So it's preventative. It doesn't actually take away HIV. I'm based on one billboard that I drove past at 45 miles an hour. I believe it's a preventative <laughs> pill. It's, a, it's not a, it's not a, hey, do you have HIV? We'll take this and you're all good. Because I do remember reading somewhere that somebody that had HIV got rid of it. It was like, ah, I said like, it was the first person that, uh, or one of the first people that were was able to uh, defeat the horrible disease. Well, I for, for I the future awesome of this country, for the future of many other countries, and for the future of our children, I certainly would love it if HIV could get eradicated. I read a book one time that was talking about HIV and how when it first became prevalent in the United States, how terrified scientists were that the disease would mutate because that's what diseases do, right? They they evolve that it would evolve to be airborne and if that happened that would be an extinction level event for humankind. It's, and that's terrifying. Yeah, it's so, like uh, well, let's that get was... that out of our Let's get that out of our whole <laughs> outbreak. Our that whole, movie yes, outbreak. Yeah. Holy shit, that's that is terrifying. Yeah, that is totally. similar to bacteria evolving to become resistant to antibiotics. It is that's and that's what viruses do. They evolve, they change, and all it would take is a very small change for that to become airborne. So let's uh, let's go ahead and knock that in the balls and get it out of here. Let's not have that around anymore. I second that. <laughs> ah, stories from the road. So Let's we have a couple stories, huh? Yeah, man. So you called me and you were very sad. When <laughs> you called me. And you not only did you call me very sad, but you called me at like 6.30 in the morning <laughs> to tell me a story. So go ahead, man. In my what, defense, what was it? it was 7.30 Eastern time in the morning. <laughs> okay, fine. I had a little conference where I get to sh kind of do my thing in front of people that are responsible for booking acts like myself. And it was just a small little thing someone put on uh, for my little region up here. And uh, I went, it was in Rhode Island. I went, drove three hours. So I had to get up at 4 a.m. and leave by 4.30 a.m., drive three hours, I. Uh, it began at 8 o'clock, so I got there between 7.30 and 8. And while I was driving down, I have a little rant on Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> I, I, Dunkin' Donuts, get your shit together on the small coffee cups, all right? The small coffee cup lids suck. You, you go to pick one up, it pops off and spills all over the fucking car. It's ridiculous. Come on. <laughs> Can't you make smaller versions of your medium cups? Or do you do that to try to get people to buy the medium coffee and spend a little more cash? I, I told you this on the phone, but it for real, for real, one of my biggest fears when traveling, I have two. The first one is seeds in my drinks. 
I am terrified of seeds in my drinks. I feel like I will swallow one accidentally and just vomit all over the table. So I'm just terrified of seeds. And the second one are coffee lids. I have been burned both literally and figuratively too many times by coffee lids in my life. So, yeah, uh, this whole story was terrifying to me because you're driving and you had this super – Dunkin' Donuts coffee is hot, right? Yeah, it is not, very sexy. <laughs> it is hot and sexy and steamy. And did it spill on you? Did it get on your pants or anything? I got, I got lucky. I had a couple of drops on my sweatshirt, and then it mostly dropped into my cup holder because I was able to get it over there quick enough before I destroyed it. But it went all over my hand, and I thought I was going to have to sue them for millions of dollars. But unfortunately, I still had my skin on my fingers, so I didn't have to. <laughs> Well, Dunkin' Donuts, get your stuff together. Seriously, we we're trying. We're tr if we're drinking coffee, we're already at a low spot in our motor skills. Yeah, we don't I, need any extra challenges, you know. What's your favorite coffee, by the way, when you're uh, on the road? Is it what is it? Man, I hate to admit this, but my favorite coffee. If I'm going to stop at a coffee shop, even though I end up spending an epic crap ton of money at Starbucks while I'm at airports and stuff like that. I'm a huge fan of the caribou coffee. I like yeah. caribou coffee a lot. And then my second is kind of a cop out, but I go to the gas station and get those monster or Starbuck Java's oh, the coffee flavored things the cold ones? with yeah, the cold ones with the energy boost in them and mm -hmm. then, man, that is that's kind of my my to go choice i don't run into many caribou coffees unless you're in like minnesota or something but i will have to try it again i think dunkin donuts is kind of like the subway of coffee it's like ugh, i'm catching myself guys <laughs> i agree that dunkin donuts is kind of the subway of coffee it's but good coffee it's not that, great coffee right what's interesting about that is just like any subway i've had Excellent Subway. I've been to a couple of Subways that were exceptionally good. And I've been to some that were the days in of fast food <laughs> restaurants. But uh, but yeah, so yeah, same thing, man. I, I, I think I've had some Dunkin' Donuts coffee that was five days old and terrible. And I've had some that was, you know, right on point. Yeah, As I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I always get uh, dark roast. Black. What do you get? What do you what do you what are you in for? I I like the medium roast. The dark roast is a little little yeah. harsh on my tummy. I just remembered. I also really enjoy the coffee, even though it's insanely insanely hot at the Einstein's donut uh, Einstein's bagels. I'm a big fan of the Einstein's. Mm, too. They make great sandwiches. They do. All right, back to the story. <laughs> I'm driving down the highway. I spill coffee all over myself. I swear a few times. I get back on the road. Uh, I get to the school where there's supposed to be a lot of people there, and I can't find anybody. I go to the gym where we're supposed. Wait, to are you lost or, or no, are there just, cars there? I got there. I'm there. I'm at. I'm where I'm supposed to be. I go to the gym where I'm supposed to set up my little uh, promo booth and everything, and nobody's there. So I find a bathroom. Do what you do in a bathroom, and uh, no one's there still. And the showcase starts at nine and goes to like twelve or something like that. Like, does that count? I said like that. Uh, I'll let that one slide. All right. Yeah. And uh, I get into the theater and it's empty. <laughs> no one's there. I think to myself, well, it's about 8.15. I should start setting up because I'm a professional. I need to be ready at a drop of a hat to do my thing and try to get shows, right? Uh, so I start setting up my magic and nobody's there. Uh, backtrack about 20 minutes before I went to the theater, I called my contact. She didn't pick up. So I left a message saying, Hey, how's it going? I'm here. I just would want to know where I should be at. I don't, I don't see anybody here. So yeah, just give me a call. Looking forward to today and leave a little message. So I start setting up in the theater and then I get a call. I don't recognize the number pick up. It's my contact for this conference. And she starts apologizing profusely oh, no! because apparently this little thing was canceled a week ago and I'm nobody so told sorry. me. Sorry. <laughs> and I was really bummed. Like when she told me that my heart just dropped. Oh yeah. And 
she was very nice and apologetic. And for the misstep, she promised that she would book my show. So, <laughs> I guess. so you booked one. That's I good. got one out of it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's, it wasn't a total good. loss. <laughs> Uh, she, she was super. I'm, I'm not mad, but things get things like that happen. But it is nice that she told me she would book my show. That was very so, nice. Wait, so was us. was that basically a seven or eight hour round trip mistake? Yeah, uh, three hours driving each way, so six hours driving, and then what? Two an hour and a half, two hours while I was set there. up and tear down. Yeah, well, I didn't set up completely. I uh, I was just getting my show ready. I didn't get my booth up or anything because there was nothing. To, there were no tables. There's nothing. Ready. <laughs> there was no one there. the The gym was locked. I couldn't even go and play ball if I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I man. on in Maine we do not have IKEAs. So I <laughs> went on the way to the show. We passed by the IKEA in, or I passed by the IKEA in Massachusetts, and a few days after that, I was scheduled me and my wife for making an epic ikea trip we literally rented a van to go to ikea so oh i my god i stopped at the ikea to kind of scope everything out and get a cinnamon bun before i head home and but that's <laughs> what i've been doing all morning is putting together freaking ikea furniture <laughs> you look frazzled man i'm telling you right oh. now i mean i love you but that you have the i've been working on ikea glow <laughs> yeah <laughs> about i was you. I was really looking forward to, to this beer to just <laughs> chill and not deal with it. It's mostly for the office though, and it's looking pretty good. I got a new uh, a new table for my mixer, and I've got two big wardrobe units, the Pax modular wardrobe units, where I can put all my shit and close it up behind doors so I can't see. Nice, it. Yeah. nice. It's gonna look nice. really sharp, I think. Do you like IKEA? Are you a fan of going to IKEA? Um, I like it. But there's a time limit. There's a, Absolutely. I enjoy going through, when I'm in the mood for organization and f- doing all that stuff, I definitely enjoy it. My wife loves Ikea. <laughs> loves. She, her, her tolerance for Ikea is definitely more than mine. She, she could probably set up in one of the displays and live there. I, I'm, you know, three hours maybe tops. I'm ready to grab my shit and go. Oh, you're so much better than I am. 45 minutes. That's how long I have before I just start going crazy in Ikea. And I hate being lost. It's it's one of my personal pet peeves is being lost. And I get turned around in Ikea all the freaking time. And I get to the spot where it's it's survival. You know what I mean? It's it's where I'm... <laughs> you get the about, look of well, yeah, <laughs> in your eye setting up a tent and setting up a deadfall trap and who I'm going to skin first to get out of there because I keep passing the same freaking lamp every single time. And I know I've been past this section before, but if you end up going through some of those secret mid exits instead of going around the whole track, but then you make a wrong turn, you can end up just going right back around that same track, and it's terrible. So, yeah, 45 minutes, that's basically all the time I have for Ikea. Sorry, Ikea. I've seen that look in other dudes' faces. Uh, you, you see them, they're, they're smiling when they first get in, and then all of a sudden their face goes to, like, Neanderthal man, and like, yeah. i got to get out of here. Where's the food? Come on. I need a drink. The food? <laughs> Do they have a bar in Ikea? They should. Uh, not in the one I go to. You can buy cider and coffee. Huh. They have great. Uh, they have great ice cream cones. I like it. The frozen yogurt. Huh. Yeah, that kind of no, helps. Me I would get need through. more than frozen yogurt and a lollipop, man. I would need a full-on beer tower or a stein. If they want, <laughs> let you walk around with a stein, that would be great. That'd be interesting. What do uh, they're Swedish, right? IKEA. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so th- they love beer over there, right? Yeah. I yeah. when I first got into IKEA, I forgot my tape measure. And I know they have those stupid paper tape measures. They they're not they're not, they'll not get the you by. They're yeah, no good. It's not the same. And yeah. I had to walk all the way through the entire marketplace to get out cuz I couldn't figure out how to get <laughs> back out to the car. It's uh, terrible. Well, dude, I'm so sorry that happened to you. I had a weird week too. I ended up doing a lock-in, which I don't do many lock-ins. I do during the Right before the summer, I usually do some Project Grad shows. But this was a Race for the Cure 
lock in that a college put on. And so it was the programming board, but it was also a a race for the cure event. So there were adults there as well doing the this walk. But most of them were college students. A lot of uh, fraternities and sororities were there. And the deal was that the only flights that we could get to the venue, which was in Pennsylvania, were at just the worst possible times. We had to, I got up at 4.30 in the morning to make it to the airport by 6 to do a 7.30 flight that got me to Jersey at 12.30. And then had to drive from there to Pennsylvania, so that put it at about 3. And then we had this weird, awkward break from 3 till 7, which wasn't enough time for me to catch up on my sleep. And I was doing work anyway because I was actually pretty wide awake. Then at 7, we had to go load in. We had to be loaded in by 9.30 or 10. Then we had to go eat what we're calling lunch but was actually late-night dinner. (laughs) Then... We went to do the event, which was from midnight till 4 a.m., which is rough, man. That is a rough time slot. Yeah. Even, like, nowadays, like, any 9 or 10 o'clock shows, I'm like, oh, that's the time I go to bed now. (laughs) When you become (laughs) a parent, your whole whole schedule flip-flops. Oh, absolutely. So I do my midnight to 4 a.m. show. We tear down. We're out of there at about 5.30. We go back to the hotel. We have to get up by 7.10 to make it back to Jersey in time to catch our flight home. And so with all of the weird travel circumstance surrounding it, I ended up being awake for, I think it was 42 hours no. straight. Seriously? Yeah, because I got You home. did not nap. No, I didn't nap. I tried to nap on the plane, but that was, you know, when you get that section of where kids are right behind you and they're kicking your head mm. and shaking your shaking your seat i even had one kid that kept reaching behind his seat and he would just reach and stretch and he would grab my phone and just shake my phone while i'm trying to watch a video or something right how old so, is this kid he was, you know he's a seven-year-old kid he's just Seven a normal kid i'm just yeah. gonna bug this guy i want his phone i'm gonna shake it around so i end up getting home and Shannon wasn't home and I wanted to stay up so I didn't screw up the rest of my sleep schedule. So I ended up playing a video game and I look at the clock and it's 1245 AM. So I've gone all the way around the clock all the way again. Then she finally gets home and I pass out. But yeah, it ended up being about 42 hours of being awake because of really crappy routing. And man, Sunday, I was a freaking zombie. I could like I am I am too old to be doing forty hour days, you know. So how many? How much money did Starbucks get from you in that forty two hour period? That is the question. Or sixty Caribou. bucks. Sixty bucks. Sixty bucks. All on coffee that or includes, snacks? No, that includes oatmeal, and I'm a big fan of their fruit and yogurt parfait, Ooh. and I got some pastries to help me through the the midnight to 4 a.m. slot. But yeah, <laughs> Starbucks literally got 60 bucks for me. That's uh, that's over a, a dollar an hour. It's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, man. So that's insane. I don't even know if I could physically make 42 hours. It was, it was tough. The toughest part was the flight home because my body told me I was tired, but I was in an... It was a completely full plane, and like I said, there was kids on both sides of me, and I couldn't sleep. Actually, that reminds me of another thing I want to tell you about. On the flight up, I was trying to sleep, and I probably got about 30 minutes of of a nap in, and the guy sitting next to me in the middle seat, it was also a completely full flight, the guy sitting next to me in the middle seat saw my head kind of move, which I guess gave him the idea that it was okay to talk to me. But he shook my leg, so I get startled, and I take out my – I have noise-canceling headphones. I take out my uh, noise-canceling headphones to be like, hey, yeah, man, you okay? Is everything cool? What's up? And he said, dude, I'm just so jealous of people who can sleep on airplanes. Oh, my God. He woke (laughs) you up out of his sleep. He woke me up. To tell me that he was jealous of people who could sleep on airplanes. You you should say, you know, I'm jealous 
of people who don't get woken up while sleeping on their blankets. <laughs> I'm jealous of people who still have their throat not punched. But I'm you jealous know, of do? people who have manners. <laughs> yeah, it was awful. So, yeah, that was the big thing this week was just being a zombie on Sunday and That's, uh, trying to get my sleep scheduled back in, in order. So, yeah. That's an weird, insane weird week. That, yeah, that's an insane stretch, man. How did you get your uh, workout in? That is the question. How did I get my workout in? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I didn't. I didn't get any workout in. <laughs> do you work week. out? Every once in a while, I get, yeah, I do. You, you know, being on a, oh, that's, that's too You right know, there. too. Yeah. Sip, I'll talk to everybody while you drink. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's all. I didn't have anything to say, so I'm just going to do this. I'll say. I don't know how you're doing, but I'm on my third glass of wine already. (laughs) (laughs) This beer is almost done, and it's a big one too. I I do like to work out. I try to work out. My schedule is such it's so unpredictable that it's very difficult to work out. What I'm really trying to do right now is just watch what I eat, which I know spending sixty dollars at Starbucks doesn't sound like that's what I'm trying to do. But I really do try to watch what I eat. I'm trying to eat more veggies and stuff like that. The hotels that I stay at, I know that there are lots of hotels out there, but the hotels that I stay at, 80% of them have a terrible workout facility, just horrendous workout facility. So I pretty much have stopped going. I stopped caring about going and doing the moldy treadmill or the bicycle from 1970 that they got at a garage sale. I just hate those. So, do you, but do you, so you do not on the road? Not very often, not anymore. Yeah. But at home you do? But at home I try to, I also, I've recently taken up golf and I'm trying to walk the golf course and just get, uh, get, get the legs moving, you know, do a little bit of workout like that. So that's yeah. cool. What about I, you? I know you're a fitness nut. You do the P90X and all that stuff, right? Yeah, I do. I just started up again uh, like a week ago. Oh, I didn't like. Here you go. I'll cover for you, buddy. Thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> I started up a week ago again. I go through bouts where I do it for a long period of time, and then I just drops off, and I get busy, and then I stop. And that's an excuse to not work out, but... Uh, I am back on the train, a P90X3, because it's 30 minutes long with a 10-minute warm-up, so I get it done quicker. I just put a uh, – I got rid of my freestanding pull-up bar, and I drilled in this awesome thing that you hang from the rafters in my basement, pull-up bar, which is the thing nice. I'm describing. Gus <laughs> <Nice. laughs> is – I am motioning how – my pull-ups look. <laughs> over he looks like guys. a skinny <laughs> ultimate warrior. Yeah. <laughs> it's just moving his arms you know, I down. lose weight when I stop working out. Isn't that crazy? I, I lose weight because all my muscle goes away, and but my metabolism yeah. stays up where I've worked hard to keep it, and it just stays up there for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, I do not work out on the road, though. I used huh. to work out a little bit. Yeah, no, I, here's, here's my thing. I have been my exact same size since I was in high school. I quite literally have pants and shirts that I wore. I have pictures of me wearing in high school that still fit me perfectly. I'm the exact same size as I was then. That's great for your clothing budget. It it is. It is good (laughs) for my clothing budget, but it's just, it's difficult for me to change sizes except, except for, with the nutrition thing, you know, I've, I've worked out on and off most of my life being on sports teams and stuff like that. But yeah, for me right now, it is a total focus on nutrition. And once I get that to a spot where I'm super happy with, then the next step will be adding in fitness. I don't know about that P90X stuff, man, that I've seen some of those workouts that forget that. that That's the best man. If you're serious about, uh, you know, a fitness goal, you got to do P90X. They do cardio, strength training, f- flexibility. It's everything for like complete whole workout. Everything is, uh, and it's all laid out. You don't have to make any guesswork. You just listen to Tony Horton as he yells at you <laughs> and, and you just do what he says. He's your God for 30, 40 minutes. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'm a mix of that Tybo shit on, <laughs> on that Billy Blanks Tybo. <laughs> and then I go to Gold's from the gym 90s. and I do some of that water aerobics and senior size because I feel like I look cool. <laughs> so. You know what? There are, 
There are two reasons I don't work out on the road, though. One, it's really difficult with the schedule, as you know, and I'm lazy, or it's just difficult. And two, I sweat like a pig, man. Every time I work out, I have to take a shower. So all my clothes I work out in are stanky, and I could be on the road for another week. What, what am I supposed to do with those clothes? Just yeah, stick them I'm, in my bag and they'll smell everything else up? It doesn't make – it just doesn't I work. used to travel with a gym bag that fit in my suitcase so I could keep my, <laughs> my sweaty, gross stuff separated from everything. And then I got into those – you know those Vibram shoes, the toe sock shoes? They're yeah. basically the, barefoot running shoes. Yeah. I, I brought those on the road with me because they didn't take up as much weight in my bag – and they still worked as workout shoes, so I could go to the gym or go walk around outside without adding the weight of tennis shoes in my bag. But those things started getting so funky <laughs> <laughs> that no bag could contain the nast that was the sweaty toe sock shoe. They were terrible. So I had to get rid of those, and basically when I got rid of those, that was the end of me working out on the road because I just I didn't have room in my bag for three pairs of shoes while I'm on the road for two weeks, you know? Yeah, same here. Oh, that, to- I killed you know, it the oh. <laughs> Toast, Toe sock shoe stank. There's our show title. Toast, <laughs> say that three times fast. Toe sock shoe stank. <laughs> Toe sock shoe stank. Toe sock shoe stank. Toe sock shoe stank. Damn, you killed it. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> I'll drink for that, though, anyways. I didn't All say right. like, but... So while you're on the road, Pete, I have an interview question for you. While you're oh, on the road please. and you're driving hours and hours to do events that end up not being <laughs> not being there, <laughs> do you listen to books while you're on the road? I do. I hire a book reader and he sits in my passenger seat and I just uh, he just goes through his collection of awesome books. If you're not in Peter Bois' tax bracket, let me say that you can <laughs> you can also do audiobooks. And I'm a huge fan of audiobooks. They've gotten me down the road so many times. I know you and I have many of the same favorite audiobooks. And we'll probably get to our number one that I think we can both just agree on hands down. But if you are out there and you don't take advantage of books in general... This is my strong plea to please start reading something. I know I have lots of friends who since high school have never, ever read a book. And I'm sorry, but there's so many great books out there. You got to at least try. So, Pete, what's what's one of your favorite? Well, let's do top five. So what's right. one of your what's one of your favorite books that has meant a lot to you over the years? All right. I'll start off with the very first book that kind of opened my eyes that reading was cool (laughs) okay uh this is in seventh grade uh my english teacher recommended the giver by lois lowry it's a very popular i think a pulitzer prize winning author uh it you know it's a very popular book that most people read and a shitty movie from what i hear Super shitty movie. <laughs> the dude should never be in <laughs> in the position as the giver. <laughs> he just um, abides. Yeah. I, I have not seen it because I don't want to ruin my perception. I read this book in seventh grade and it kind of opened my eyes to what cool writing and storytelling could be. Uh, and it was, yeah, it was just amazing. From then on, I was always looking for that next cool book, better book book that I wanted to read. And uh, now that I'm in my tax bracket, I just have people uh, read them to me in my car. <laughs> you, yeah. I always go for the English accents, though. If you don't have an English accent, don't apply to be my passenger reader. That's a, that's that's very understandable of you, because the English accent when reading a novel is just super sexy. Yeah, it really totally. is. So, How about you, man? So uh, this is such a cop out. Uh, I I'm adding this is my sixth book on my list, so I'm sorry that I'm I'm just being like that. The first book that I ever – the first novel that I ever read by myself had nothing to do with school or anything like that was – I'm a big Stephen King fan now, and this probably kicked it off. But I read the book Firestarter when I was a kid, and that book was so good – that it scared the absolute crap out of me to the point that I went outside and waited under a lit street lamp till my mom got home in the evening because I was so terrified. I didn't even want to turn the page to see what scary (laughs) thing was on the next page. So 
that was the first book that really got me to love reading. That what being it, said, what is it about? I'm curious now. I've never read it. It's it's about a little girl who can start fires and her terrible situation and the government comes to put her in a box and nobody puts baby in the corner and she sets fire to everything. Hence <laughs> <laughs> her name, like fire started. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Nice. And especially being a middle school, high school kid, not really reading, I'm going to just give Stephen King mad props. That was the first book that I read that really let me see that reading a novel could be cool. The The book on my number five list, though, or the number five book on my list is Ken Grimwood's Replay. I love time travel. Time travel is the shit. And this book is all about the idea that this guy keeps living an entire life when he dies and he dies at the same time every the same day the same time the same minute every single year he starts his life over back when he was 16 years old and can do it all again and it's so good that it explores every aspect of of what it would be like to know the entire future so he gets rich cuz he knows the lottery numbers and he knows who is winning in the Kentucky Derby and he bets all his money and he has a chance at this one girl, and she's really cool, but she doesn't go for him. So he gets to try again next time and see what his life is like. Anyway, the book is really cool it's as Groundhog an exploration. Day. In, it is. It's Groundhog Day on an epic level because he has an entire life, not a day. So wow. check it out. It's a really cool book. Replay. I'll have to check that out with my um, – see if my book reader has that in his collection. <laughs> I every once in a while I put out a uh, question on Facebook and ask for book recommendations and I got this from a friend on Facebook can't remember who it was but it this book uh, it's called The Island or Island of the Sequined Love Nun by Christopher Moore it's it's not like anything crazy or life changing it was just a fun story I don't know it was uh, about this guy a pilot who crashes you learn this in the first chapter he crashes his plane while having sex in the cockpit and there's a new name there's a new meaning to cockpit <laughs> oh no oh, oh i went there <laughs> three so, beers down ladies and gentlemen three <laughs> beers down <laughs> he loses his license and he's looking for a job and he gets a strange offer from a island in the south pacific and he takes it, and it's all about that going there. One thing, side note: Do you know? Well, this is not. This has to do with the book, but do you know that there's literally something called cargo cults in the south, uh, in on islands in the South Pacific? Or I don't know if they're still around anymore. Do you ever what hear is about it? those? No. Cool. What is it? I think it happened. It happened during World War II when we were fighting over there. We'd go uh -huh. to these remote islands where tribes of people had never really been off the, the island before. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, those soldiers became gods because they had all these crazy... They could fly. They had all these weird supplies. And they would give these to the people. And these people would worship them. And there were cults kind of based around that. Isn't that that's so... What? That is amazing. That's one of those that's one of those things I think about that happened in that generation's time that really can't happen now with the internet and all that stuff. You just don't get that amazing new sense of bringing technology or that there's undiscovered worlds out there that could see you and see all your technology and think, "Oh my god, you guys are from outer space or whatever," you know? Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if uh, that they're still around or not, but that was an interesting um, part of the book that uh, got me thinking. But yeah, it was a good story. I, if, right. if you like a fun, lighthearted uh, summer reading story, go for that one. Here's one that I, 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 too, ask for books all the time, and this one was recommended to me probably by Mr. Brian Brushwood. So, Brian, thank you so much. Brian's recommended most of the fun books that I've gotten to listen to on with with the common folk where I don't have my English accented person reader sitting in the passenger seat with me. But this was Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. If you haven't read this book, it's going to be a, a movie pretty soon. Before the movie comes out, do yourself a huge favor and freaking go read this book. One, it is an exceptionally well-written book. I was hooked from the very first chapter. 
Two, if you're into geek culture at all, if you played video games, if you ha- remember playing things from Pac-Man all the way up to where you now have a Vive and you're playing things in 3D, if, if that kind of culture appeals to you, check this book out. It is a walk through memory lane by someone who obviously put the time, effort, love, and care into this, into this book about that culture. It is beautiful. It is just a fun, fun, fun read. Dude, I have some more, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, uh, on my, you know, my reader has an app actually, right? My, uh, my reader, my guy, he has an yeah. app that I just What's go on there. Uh, it's, it's, uh, called, um, uh, I can't come up with any, any <laughs> English <laughs> names. <laughs> we'll call it, uh, Audi. We'll call it Audi. How's that sound? Okay. Uh, right. yeah. Audi. And you, you just click on it and he'll bring that book next time we're in the car. Right, it's good. You can do that. <laughs> All right. Number three for you. All right. I will go with. Shut Up, Stop Whining, and Get a Life by Larry Winget. He's the pit bull of (laughs) self-help. The pit bull of self-help? Now, this book itself, you shouldn't just go out and read, okay? But if you need a boost, if you are stuck in a self-pity party rut, or you're trying to motivate yourself, or you need a self-help book, and tough love is what you need, this is the book for you. Uh, He's one of those motivational speakers. Back in the day before I was a full-time professional magician, I was trying to become a full-time professional magician, (laughs) and uh, it's really hard to do. And you get stuck in these mindsets where you're, I'm not good enough, or nobody likes me, or I can't do this, and you get this vicious cycle of self-pity and uh, failure, basically. And you're trying to turn that around, and it's base. you're trying to stop this... this wheel from turning one way, stop it, and then get the momentum turning in the other way. And it's really difficult to do. It's A lot of it's in your head and also, you know, the fruits of your labor have to come through to help uh, push that wheel along. And uh, this book, I was in Staples. I saw it on the <laughs> – it was an impulse buy. I saw it right at the register. <laughs> and it was the exact message I needed at the exact time. I picked it up. I read it. It was just very much like – Look, if you want to do something, go and do it. Don't be a don't be a pansy. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> and uh, a lot of self help books are like I like that. They'll say, "Hey, is this your problem?" And you say, "Yeah, that's totally my problem." And they'll say, "All right, well, basically, you know how to fix it, don't you? Stop being a pussy." <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and and that's what I needed, man. And I and that's when I my attitude started changing, and uh, it really helped me, uh, yeah, change my attitude and become successful that's cool so that's funny you're doing a perfect job of setting me up because this is on those same lines i was in the process of buying a new business and also having some relationship troubles all at the same time it was it was a weird time in my life and this book it was it was like finding the holy grail it was it was like all of the answers that i was looking for were inside this book and uh, this author has had a couple of others that were exceptionally interesting but this specifically this first one was just life changing for me so i got to put the tipping point blink and all of the other books by malcolm gladwell on there uh, on on my list just because it sort of in its own way pulled back the veil of what was happening in my life that I thought was personally directed at me and change it over where I could see that there is mathematics and design behind why things were working the way that they were working. And it it really helped change my attitude and perspective that got me to a much better place. So I don't even know if I'd call this a self-help book, but it is a, if you're interested at all in why the universe works the way that it works and get your brain thinking like an economist Check these books out by Malcolm Gladwell. Specifically, The Tipping Point was my favorite. Nice. I just read my next one. I just literally uh, had my English guy read this to me. Uh, (laughs) uh, Born a Crime, Stories from a South African Childhood by Trevor Noah. He's the guy that took over the uh, Daily Show for Jon Stewart. Uh, I've never listened to him. I've never watched the new Daily Show with him, but it seemed interesting. He seems like a funny guy, so uh, I listened to it, and it's pretty freaking crazy 
the stories, some of the stories, or all the stories he has. Uh, he was born six years before apartheid ended there, and just listening, because we have our own, you know, race issues in America, and South African race issues are, imagine slavery ending in the 80s, <laughs> you know, like, that's how yeah. close it is. Yeah, uh, I saw an interview with him not too long ago, where he was talking about apartheid, and he said, in America... This is not a quote, so please don't take this as a direct quote. But his basic idea was, in America, because we can't be just brutally honest with each other, racism is such a ethereal thing. People either want to – they are racist, but they don't know how to express it. They aren't racist, but they're scared that they might be, come across this way. It's just – it's such a strange thing. During apartheid, you could just be like, no, I'm – straight up racist forget those people <laughs> and that was totally cool and he said so at least there was honesty involved in that in that in that situation even though it was terrible at least there was some sort of you knew exactly where people stood and i, I think that that's both painful and also a poignant point you know yeah it's no hiding there's no hiding behind uh trying not to hurt other people's feelings you just say what you think and <laughs> that is you, you <laughs> and either you want to hang out with this person or not anymore right uh okay there what well, there's definitely some uh really serious crazy stories and some funny stories in there there's one about i'm not going to say the story but uh, if you do read or listen to this book the story about his friend named hitler is disturbing and hilarious at the same time <laughs> I'm in. I will totally. That's on my reading list when I get my own English person or when I just download it off of, <laughs> off of Audible. <laughs> okay, so my number two book is a book that I have gone back to and listened to probably six times in my life. It's a book called The Forever War by Joel Haldeman. It's part of a three-part series. Forget the other two books. They're not nearly as good. But the first book, The Forever War takes a average Joe who is in the United States at the time and they just discovered f uh, space flight and it takes that guy and talks about how he keeps going out into outer space and the longer the further away he goes because of time dilation because of traveling near the speed of light the further he goes he basically ages at a completely different rate than everybody else on Earth. And so it gives that meaning of what are we fighting for, why are, why are we going to war, a whole different meaning. Because as he comes back to Earth over the time periods that he comes back, Earth has evolved by 50 years, then by 150 years, then by 300 years, and then towards the end by 1,000 years. And the people on Earth aren't the same kinds of people that he remembered leaving the earth to go fight and protect for. And so it just, it explores humanity in such an interesting way, looking at just one guy's experience as he basically time hops and sees the evolution of humanity. And it's a really great book. It's a great story. There's a good love story in there too. And it made me laugh out loud many, many times. So check that book out too. I have actually read that one. Yeah. Nice. What'd you think? I, I loved it. I thought it was great. Yeah, it was good. Very good. Very good book. Cool. Well, that gets our Monday Club podcast recommendation, so check it out. And the number one. This is our both number one, so we'll just say it at the same time. Okay, here we go. Ready? One, two, two three. three. Dark, the Dark Tower, Tower by Stephen King. Oh, my King. God. Stephen King's Dark Tower. <laughs> All seven books. Seven and a half books, really, because there's a and a... a 7.5 book oh, through the sort keyhole. of a short story that came yeah when oh the i that's my, my guy's got that he's gonna read that to me soon <laughs> i haven't that's the only one i haven't read yet so here's the thing with the dark tower i know lots of people who've tried it they've read most of the first book and they've been like well this is just crap i can't deal with this and they've let it go look people just take my hand and come with me on this adventure the dark tower is the center of all Stephen King's books. If you can make it through all seven and a half books of The Dark Tower, 
you will understand every other book that he's ever written on a much deeper level because they're written, they're, they're parts of this book. And I've listened to this book enough that those characters are, they are friends of mine. When I, when I start the book over again and I hear their names and their voices being, being read on the, on the audiobook, it's like getting to see some of my friends after a long period of time. I freaking love every single one of those books. I totally agree. I was hooked from the moment uh, I started to them. Although Stephen King, he sometimes he goes, he's a little long winded on some things. Occasionally I'm like, all right, just get to the point. But I, you know, uh, but overall, yeah, it was pretty m- incredible. It's one of the most masterfully written like stories. That's just kind of, it's so huge. It is. It's so it's epic. such a huge, huge story. And I agree that he can be very long-winded, and he goes off on a t- – the worst part for me is something big is about to happen, and he brings you right to the edge of it happening. And then he switches over, and for 35 pages, we'll talk about a goddamn leaf falling off <laughs> of a tree. And you think to yourself, get to the goddamn story! <laughs> but it's those moments of being drawn out and and the moments of him – bringing a full-on world together where I feel like if I got dropped off into this world, I would have a map in my head of where things were and how to get around that brings this whole story to life in such a different way than any other book has ever done for me. So, yeah, Stephen King, Dark Tower, number one book, number one series of all time. Yeah, you're the shit, Stephen King. (laughs) You really are. And to our weekly segment called Teachable Moments. Teachable Moments. Dude, we need to record something after this podcast for these segments. You in? Yeah, we will. We'll we'll record something that sounds much better than us (laughs) off-key singing. Uh, So my teachable moment uh, is uh, I saw that Gus in the show notes picked a app for his teachable moment. So I went to my apps and have a uh, app as a recommendation slash makes your life easier. It's paprika. It's for the iPhone. It is a, I'm going to seem all real domestic on you all of a sudden. It's a (laughs) recipe box app for your phone and what an iPad computer. And it's awesome. This is how I store all my, I'm the cook in my family. I cook most of the dinners, if not all of them. And I keep all the recipes in here. The, one of the greatest things about this, besides being a fantastic recipe uh, storage place, what is that? Database. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Organizational tool is the sh- grocery shopping list. So you have all your ingredients in the recipe. You press a button and you can add all of those ingredients or take them off one at a time to your uh, grocery list. So you can literally be pulling up to the grocery store being like, damn it, I don't have a freaking list. I don't know what I'm going to get. I don't know what food I'm going to make this week for dinner. You go right to the Paprika app. You say, I want this and this. Add all that stuff to my grocery list. It makes a grocery list for you. You walk in, buy it, check things off as you get them, and go out. Bada beam, bada boom. Bam. There you go. That's my, that's my teachable moment. Download that nice. and use it. All right. So here's my teachable moment, and it starts with a small rant. There's a store out there whose name gets my gears every single time, all right? That store is called The Home Depot. Are you are you familiar with The Home Depot? I am. I so, frequent The Home Depot. I like to call it the HD. Here's here's my problem with The Home Depot. Its name is The Home Depot, not Home Depot, not Office Depot, not Depot, it is the Home Depot. The is a part of their name. You with me so far? Yeah, so it's like the only one. Wait, I It's the like. only one, which it clearly is not. There's bajillions of the Home Depots all around. Also, when one says, hey, I need to go to, what do they say? They say, I need to go to Home Depot, because that makes sense. But no, people should say, I'm going to the Home Depot. In fact, Right here, right now, on this show, I could save them, I'm going to say, over a million dollars easy in cash right now. All they'd have to do is take the giant 
letters in neon that say the off of their stupid sign, off of their marquee that light up every single day. You just take those down because no one cares. And then it would just be Home Depot written in big, bright letters. And the money you would save in the giant T, the giant H, the giant E, all of the electricity that goes in there. I just saved you a bajillion dollars. You were so welcome. Just send me Why do you 2%. hate it so much? It annoys me because everyone says I'm going to Home Depot, which I can get behind. Oh. But that's not the place's name. It's the Home Depot. In fact, if you want to be right about it, you would say I'm going to the the Home Depot. You see, uh, you're messing with my head, man. Uh, it's uh, I'm dropping truth bombs. Here, so you're saying right? it's Led Zeppelin, not the Led Zeppelin. That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> that is exactly what I'm saying. Okay, rant over. Next part. Here's my teachable moment. <laughs> my teachable Go moment shop at Home this. Depot. <laughs> the Home Depot. The see, you did it. The Home Depot has a great app. And I hate, as as per Ikea, I hate being in stores and just wandering around for a long time, which is one of the things that is possible to do when you visit the Home Depot. The Home Depot's app is amazing. You can set your location to just find which Home Depot, which the Home Depot you're in. It will let you know. If you can put in, I'm looking for hammers or I'm looking for this kind of fastener. It'll tell you what store you're in. It'll tell you what aisle and what bin it's in. You can walk directly up there without talking to any of the the, the Home Depot <laughs> attendants that are there. You get your stuff. You get to the register. You get out of there in minutes. So that is my teachable moment. I've been having to do some some work with my son to put together this project. We needed sandpaper. And using the, the Home Depot's app... I was able to quickly and easily go to get sandpaper where normally I would walk in there and wander up and down because I don't like asking for help, and it would take me 45 stubborn. minutes to find sandpaper. You so, are yeah, stubborn. The, <laughs> you won't ask yeah, for help? Whatever. Not until I hit the 20-minute mark because I, like I don't want to be stupid. I don't want to be, hey, where's the sandpaper? And the guy's saying, well, you're standing right behind it, so there it is. You know, Dude, I don't want I do that, that to happen. I do that all the time. I lost my pride many years ago. <laughs> there's no, there's no shame. <laughs> I'm so gonna download take that, the Home the, Depot the app. Home Depot. The the Home Depot app. It's gonna. I'll, you you convinced me. All right, good. Now, there's one. Anybody else? Who's coming with me? Who's <laughs> coming with me? Well, man. Cheers. Wait, wait. We have to say like, like. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I love that. Happy Monday, Club. Check us out at mondayclubpodcast.com and email us questions, comments, concerns, whatever. Mondayclubpodcast at gmail.com. You want us to talk about something, let us know. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, too. Happy Monday. The, the Monday Club. We should be the, the, the Monday, Monday Club. Club. <laughs> Like, I need to finish this drink. Like, 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 like